Hi, I'm Natalie, and I'd like to welcome you to Mission TV Live tonight. Tonight, I want to offer a free book. We've shared this book before, but in case you're a new viewer and you haven't had a chance to call in or email us, um, actually, if you call us, we will send you a copy of this book, Why Am I a Missionary? Why Should You Be a Missionary? It's by Jonathan Dietrich, who is a missionary in Africa with his wife and small boy. And um, it's a really good study about the biblical principles about why we should be missionaries. And it's, it's really neat. I think you'll enjoy it. So feel free to give us a call. This is our free book that we've been given to be able to give to you. Um, our topic for tonight is the foundation. And I want to read an, a text at this point that just kind of gives you a hint as to where we're going. And that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. And it is for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'll see you on the show. Well, if we seem a little tired on the show today, <laughs> I have John with me, <clears throat> and I have Kirk, and I have Steve, and we're a little tired because as you know, if you watched last week's live, we were talking about, with Stephanie and Thad, about their wedding. Well, their wedding took place yesterday evening. Well, last yesterday, night. most of the day. Yeah. And the reception actually finished about 10.15 or 10.30. So we were all up very late, but it was a beautiful wedding, very We didn't spiritual. just attend the wedding. And yeah, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Our team actually shot. It was, it was quite a wedding. Very, very well-documented wedding. You had five shooters, five yeah. cameras. You're like the paparazzi. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to start out showing you a couple pictures from Stephanie's yes. wedding. Unfortunately, she's not here because well. they're gone. Fortunately but, for her. Yeah. <laughs> but she doesn't get to show them her pictures No, she herself. hasn't even seen these pictures yet. They took pictures of the bridal party in a park. And so these are a couple of the pictures that they were able to capture. And I think this, this uh, picture of Stephanie's face reminds us of last week's topic. And that yes. was talking about the joy and the love and the excitement that Christ is looking forward to his wedding with. That yeah, we can look forward to our relationship with him. And that enthusiasm Same. and that joy, you know, because she, she's found someone that's valuable. And I think in Christ we have a very valuable person. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting I, is I think they have a legalistic marriage because he says that he's going to do things that will please her and do nice things for her. That's works. It but is. it's not works. But it's not. Yeah. <laughs> because he's doing it out of a heart of an abundance of love for her. Mm. Okay. And that's the difference. That's a big difference. This wasn't a shotgun wedding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely by choice. No, he didn't have a shotgun. <laughs> but it was, no, a, it was a very, it. very, very classy, very nice, very spiritual wedding. I loved it. It was great. Yeah. So our topic for tonight kind of leaps off of the topic from last week, talking mm. about the wedding and the groom, mm -hmm. particularly Christ. Mm -hmm. And we want to go into our video, I mean, our topic for tonight, yeah. the foundation. Well, this is so core. I mean, just as love is the core of a good relationship in marriage. Um, you know, if <clears throat> I've seen weddings or marriages where it was an arrangement. It was, a, it was an arrangement um, of practicality. You know, you do this, you do this, you do this, I do this and this. But there's, there's very little actual joy there. Mm. <clears throat> and I think the relationship, and, and sometimes we get into that kind of arrangement with God. Mm -hmm. You know, we do this, we keep the commandments, we do da 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 da. He does his part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that love, that joy, uh, that love, that absence of love, <laughs> kind of like takes away the joy. And religion becomes a Dry. drudgery. Yeah, yeah it mm -hmm. becomes a burden. And doesn't Revelation talk about one of the letters? to one of the seven churches, I don't remember which one it is, where Jesus says, 
uh, you've lost your first love. Absolutely. And that first love experience, I mean, we all remember what that was like. Uh -huh. And we can keep that if we want, but it does require investment. Investment of time, investment of energy uh -huh. in order to keep that. And we have to do the same with Christ. Right. But when you are in your, I mean, you, we, we have to work on our relationships, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, we have to work on our relationship. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it takes discipline. But mm -hmm. my goodness, the rewards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot better than not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because there's that love there. Mm -hmm. Now I know I, I asked Christ, I says, man, if you just do this, this, and this, and then I can just do this, and, I be, and he's like, this is a marriage, not a contract. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to mm -hmm. keep in stand. And this is Paul's experience. Paul, you know, the man that was in two shipwrecks, I think, is beaten within an inch of his life several times, stoned, he was killed several times. I mean, all these things happened to him. And he says, the love of Christ constrains us. And I think, um, Steve, you had some insight on the constraints part. Uh, the uh, old English word, uh -huh. <laughs> constraints, doesn't mean, mean restrain. It means to propel forward, to, to motivate us. Uh -huh. so, it's kind of like a tractor beam, just kind of... Yeah, it is uh, when we understand Christ's love uh -huh. that that motivation will be there to do something for him. Wow. So the strongest power in the universe hmm. is love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's yeah. no question. Mm -hmm. And Christ in us, the hope of glory, Christ in us working through us. Okay. And if Christ is in us, who is love, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what other kind of constraining would there be? The love that we ha develop for him in relationship mm -hmm. and then the love that he fills mm -hmm. us with mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. for his other children. Okay, so don't I have that love already? I mean, just naturally? No. I just, I'm, I'm just not sorry a Sorry to break person. it to you. Sorry to break it to you. But so. apart from him, no, it's not good. So apart from him, I'm hosed. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a little video that I want to <laughs> kind of explain um, the situation here. Um, I spent eight months in, in, in Bangkok with a uh, church planting pastor uh, a couple years ago and um, trying to get to the heart of what makes him tick. And I would kind of ask him questions of, you know, to kind of egg him on, to put a little pressure on him to mm -hmm. see if he would break and, you know, to see what, why, what he was... <laughs> yeah, he calls them irreverent questions. Yeah. <laughs> he was very patient with you, though. <laughs> he actually answered the majority of them. Yeah, he is, yeah, he was a... He is a person that allowed God to live in him and to dwell in him, and mm -hmm. he valued Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this setting here is when we were uh, at an evangelistic series, and we were, he was, as a church planting pastor, he was there, and he was operating the camera, and he was running the, the recording device, and he was doing all this stuff, and just barely on a shoestring budget, you mm -hmm. know, borrowing a DVD recorder and borrowing a camera, and, mm -hmm kind of cobbling it together there on the, on the bench of the pew of the, of the church. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, I was asking him, you know, how come you don't get better equipment? And come to find out the, bank, the Thailand Adventist Mission only has $40,000, $45,000 a year mm -hmm. for their entire budget. Everything outside of salaries, that would be church planting, evangelistic series, printing, personal ministries, Sabbath school expense. That should be enough, though. It's a small city, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's to serve no, a country. No, no, it's a country of 65 million. Oh, that's for the country. 65 million people. Whoa. And well, I, I thought you were talking <laughs> about Bangkok, that small city yeah. Bangkok. Only 13, Only 13 million, million people. Mm. <laughs> I didn't count them all myself, but that's what I'm told. Mm. Mm. But, um, you know, I know churches that spend more than that a month mm. in their church budget. So um, anyway, so that's kind of the setting. We're driving home from that. It's like midnight, and he's talking to me in the car. Sounds like you would like to use media, but there's just no funds. There's just no. Op it's just not an option. Yeah, I, I've had some of my uh, my my Thai leaders say, you know, let's just focus on what what we can do. Let's just focus on what we can do, what we have, and and what can you do? You can just do Bible studies. 
handing out a little bit of literature. Well, we can hand out literature as long as we get it printed and we uh, get fundraise for it. Because otherwise, you know, there's no there's no literature. No literature, no budget. You know, yeah, right? No budget for it, and you know, it just. Um, so basically, you you we we can't work. I say, you know, God. Why aren't there more? Why aren't there more people who give a care about? sharing and living a message of hope. If we had additional resources, if we had greater imagination, if we had greater uh, manpower, whether volunteers or trained, you know, committed uh, people, we could do more. Right. We could reach this city. We could... Uh, do we need to? Do we need to? Yeah. Um, hello? Um... Uh, yeah, we need to reach the city. Why? Jesus is coming soon. And... Yeah, and, and everyone's going to hell because they've not had a chance to make a decision on uh, what uh, on who Jesus Christ is and uh, will they accept him. Well, that's their problem, isn't it? Well, that's the attitude that many, many people have is that, you know, well, that's their problem. You know, they're stupid. They live in the city. And, you know, well, they don't even speak English. And so, yeah, I, I mean, you, I, fa I face this stereotype all the time, they you know, when you go back to day. America. They can watch... They can watch... Uh, English... They can Christian watch English, English, English Christian channels. Yeah. Uh, the problem... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do they? Will they? Will they? Do can they even they? know they exist? Did, you know, can, can you get it on free TV? Or do you need a satellite dish? Well, you need a satellite I, you know, dish. people. I I had one person come to Thailand, and they were flabbergasted. They were just completely appalled, and they said to me, "Why is it that no one speaks English here?" You serious? And and I just like, you know, what, what are you saying? And I said, "Yeah, you know." Uh, uh, how, how am I going to spread the gospel? I've come here to be a missionary, but how am I going to spread the gospel when when they don't speak English? These are the things we battle. Um, you know, these, these attitudes. Can one person make a difference? Hmm. Well, I know that Jesus made a difference in my heart. Hmm. And if God would reach across heaven... He would reach across the galaxies to California. And there he touched my mom and dad. And he drew them with his cords of love. And as they moved throughout the Northwest, then it was through the different people that uh, and the f churches and the families that um, befriended our family. And it was through that love tractor beam, you know, drawing um, my family to him, that how God touched my heart and touched my life and how his grace became real for me, not just an intellectual um, concept. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's not just a, an idea. It's not something that's just in your brain, but to actually experience that. And so that is constantly with me that how if I have that experience how can I not share that with others you can call us at 423-413-7321 you can email us at live at mission tv.com or send us a message on Facebook at mission TV live or on Twitter at MissionTV underscore com. And we'll do our best to answer your questions or share your comments. And, you know, we just appreciate our viewers so much. We got a, a email from a viewer this week regarding mm. this topic after it was announced on Facebook and by email. And it was such a well thought out. And, you know, there well were studied. Bible texts there with the study. And it was just, it blessed us as we were studying and, and helped to guide us in our thinking for this topic. So I just want to thank our viewers that do yes. participate, sending comments and, and things, because it, it helps us. We don't know everything. 
<laughs> and we don't have time to study everything into the depth that we would like to. And many topics, like the topic for tonight, are so big that we can be studying them as we're told we will be for eternity. Mm, yeah. So I just really want to express to our viewers how much we appreciate you giving your feedback, giving your questions, giving your comments, giving ideas, all those things. We just really appreciate it. And, you know, if it's a positive thing, we love it. If it's a negative thing, we listen to it and we try to grow from it as well. So thank you for participating in the show. Mm -hmm. You know, Doug's heart in that video mm -hmm. just really, I love how he describes God's love as a tractor beam, you know, yes. drawing, mm -hmm. and how he paints the picture of his family being loved by these different people that Christ used over his experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. such a beautiful picture of, of that, that longing that Christ puts in our hearts for him and the way he fulfills that longing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, so. you know, I was just going to say, um, you know, it's like, we can sometimes only understand our relationship with God based on earthly relationships. Mm. And when you meet uh, that special someone of the opposite sex and you're very drawn to them and you spend a lot of focused time together, mm -hmm. you get to know each other in a very deep way. And then, you know, the relationship blossoms into full love. And I think in my own experience, I could relate to Doug. It's just so wonderful to think about God stepping, we don't even know the distance from the center of heaven to, to California or to where we are, but that he would love us with such an intensity mm -hmm. that he would be sending people to influence our life. And I think for me, it was seeing God's love in others that made God more real mm -hmm. and drew me with those cords of love. Mm. So it was God using people. Absolutely, absolutely. Filling them with his love. Absolutely. And you saw a difference because yeah. of that. Absolutely. And you know, we have a tendency, I think sometimes to think that, you know, in order for God to use us, we have to have some amazing talent. Mm. We have to be an amazing preacher mm. or be a good, you know, a really good, uh, be able to give Bible, Bible studies, study. for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's amazing how small deeds, small acts of courtesy and kindness mm -hmm. can just really reach a heart, especially someone who is really lonely. And I think when God came and reached me, it was a really low time in my life. Mm -hmm. But even just those little niceties, mm -hmm. spoke volumes. Mm. So God just wants people who will be available mm. to be used in whatever way, mm. small and big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got this uh, quote here. And of course, what is the foundation? That's the question. Because we didn't put that in the title. We just said the foundation. And it's more than so just... So we need a definition and kind of a... Yeah, it's more than just the foundation. It's like, what's the motivation? Okay. You know, why would we live outside of ourselves? Why would we go to another country? Why would we serve? Serve. Spend yeah. our whole lives serving. What's the foundation, motivation? It's kind of like the center, the core uh -huh. of this, of, of, of Christianity, of, uh -huh. of, of following Christ, being an Adventist. Uh -huh. And so... Being a missionary. Being a missionary, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. For sure, because, you know... Um, why would somebody do that? And a lot of people don't understand when you say, you know, I'm going to, as a missionary, they think you're crazy. Mm. Well, what is the core of that? What's the motivation here? And I think we're going to start with this, um, that's kind of all encompassing. It says, by his sacrifice, it's talking about Christ, and, med and mediation, Christ is both the foundation and the builder of the church of God. Mm. So Christ, mm -hmm. it's all about Christ. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice and mediation of Christ's sac sacrifice. When did that happen? Is that happening in the future? Is that happening now? No, it it's happened. It's not a trick question. Calvary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the culmination well, was at Calvary. His whole life here on earth was a sacrifice, but the culmination was on Calvary. Okay. It happened from the foundation of the world, but That's true. Mm -hmm. Calvary was where it really came together. That was mm -hmm. a historical fact. Yeah. That was a historical event, was mm -hmm. 
2,000 years ago, but yeah, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So then there's mediation. Where, when, is that, when did that take place? That's still taking place mm. for us all, for okay. everyone on the planet. Now, and I'm, this is a little bit of a side thing, but <coughs> as Adventists, we tend to, you know, because a lot of, we tend to react to people saying that everything happened on the cross. Everything, mm -hmm. Christ did everything on the cross. That's a finished work. And so we say, no, no, no. There's the work that he's doing in the heavenly sanctuary, mm -hmm. the mediation. Mm -hmm. But I think in kind of de-emphasizing or, or, or kind of emphasize, putting that emphasis, we tend to lose track of what Christ really did accomplish on the cross, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was incredible, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, we, and that's, okay, when Christ did that, he opened the door for us to approach the Father. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. hello. Mm -hmm. And he accepted we became part of the heavenly family. Mm. Right there. We were grafted in. Yeah, it's an accomplished work. So how do I partake of that? By faith. By faith. Um, by feeling? No. Nope. By, <laughs> by accepting it, by accepting that sacrifice, by accepting what Jesus did accomplish uh -huh. in his life, ministry, and sacrifice for yeah. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, so by that, I can enter into that by faith, mm -hmm. by accepting it mm -hmm. by faith. Now, this is a big deal to me because I spent 33 years of my life uh, hoping for forgiveness and never mm -hmm. experiencing it mm -hmm. because I kept asking for forgiveness and then looking at my heart and saying, I don't feel mm -hmm. forgiven. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go ask again. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I have to, you know, and then people, somebody would say, well, you'll stop sinning when you're sorry enough. Mm -hmm. I'll never sorry be enough. sorry enough. <laughs> Because I'm already sorry. I'm a sorry guy, you know. I, I'm a sinner, born in sin. We can be sorry and do it again. Mm -hmm. We can be sorry and do yes. it again. Over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And be sorry and be sorry and be sorry. That's not a good enough motivation. No. Well, and, and we have no ability to make a change. Right. Not I think even, that's the biggest thing, is we don't, we don't have the ability in, in ourselves to decide not to just be sorry anymore. Just right. to say, okay, I'm not just going to be sorry, I'm going to make a change. Right. We have to have the power from Christ to make a change. I don't even want to change. That's you true. Know? There was times when I felt bad, mm -hmm. and I would have liked to change then. Mm -hmm. But other times, I don't want to change. You know, I'm, I'm being me. Our human nature, apart from Christ, is so incredibly depraved. Mm. Some of us, unfortunately, have come face to face with that, those of us who weren't raised Christians, but we truly, the only thing, the only thing we have to recommend ourselves to Christ is our great need. That's yes. it. Yes. That's it. Yes. Not a single one of us is in any different situation than what I've just said. Right. Absolutely. Right. We have no, no works to bring that merit anything from Him but death. Absolutely. I think one thing we get hung up on in reading uh, the gospel and mm -hmm. trying to get our mind around the, the huge accomplishment that Jesus has is mm -hmm. that there's two parties in this broken relationship and God's part and our part. Mm -hmm. And we, we sometimes get confused about which is which. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, Paul says um, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Mm -hmm. And then he appeals, be reconciled to God. So God has done everything he can do mm -hmm. to bring us back and reconcile him to himself. But we have to believe in, in, in that work and, and accept it by faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, um, I am crucified in Christ. It's like, okay, he says that in, that's like a present tense thing. Nevertheless, I live. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm crucified with Christ or in Christ. Uh, <laughs> the, but that event took place 2,000 years ago. So how does that transaction take place, if not by faith? Mm -hmm. But so faith, though, is, is, is accepting a finished mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. accepting the word as it stands, mm -hmm. and moving forward and acting as if it is real, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. aside from our feelings, mm -hmm. apart from our feelings. And when I got that insight at 33, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, mm -hmm. what a difference. Mm -hmm. the whole, my whole Christian experience was totally revolutionized. Mm -hmm. Mm. I started to enjoy it, and I love, I love, I got so much pleasure 
out of hanging out with God mm -hmm. and reading the Bible and studying Him and claiming the Word for myself, mm -hmm. it became food, not just like mm -hmm. a text mm -hmm. that I had to read. Mm -hmm. It's like food. Mm -hmm. You can claim it by faith. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Every promise in the book is mine. The turning point for me was um, understanding that I was not under continual condemnation. Mm. Mm. Um, we, mm. I don't know, we have a, have a gospel in the church that kind of leads people to believe that until you get it together mm. and learn to, to keep the law, that you're continually coming back under condemnation. Right. Mm -hmm. but Paul right. says there is no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. And he says that right juxtaposed with who shall deliver me from this body of death. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So he's got this body of death tied to him and he says there is no condemnation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we want the joy and we want the motivation, we have to get a hold of that, yeah. that reality mm -hmm. that Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Being yeah so the con condemnation, I was listening to, a, <clears throat> what was it? I think it was a Glenn Kuhn sermon. He was saying exactly that, that we feel so condemned and we feel so guilty, but that's not from God. That's mm -hmm. from Satan trying yeah. to discourage us into going back into sin, going, oh, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. no hope for me. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it's not God. God is saying, you asked for forgiveness, I gave you forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah go and sin no more. Of course, there you is know? that that feeling of guilt where we go and we, you know... And we confess, confess. and we make right. But then there's make that... Make it right with God. After you confess, you accept the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Right. And you mm -hmm. are clean every whit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. after that mm -hmm. transaction with God of making things right, repentance, uh -huh. then to still feel the guilt is not from God. Right, that's unbelief. Right. Well, and it's, it's thoughts given to us from Satan many mm. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he just wants us to be discouraged and think, well, I asked for forgiveness and I'm not forgiven. Yeah. You know, but God is true and his word is true and his promises are there. And he says, I will forgive you. Mm -hmm. And so then he has done it. Mm -hmm. When we ask for it, he has done it already. Yeah, and that's why it's because uh, it, it, it drives me nuts because it's like every Sabbath. People talk about when the work is going to be finished, this is going to happen and this is going to happen. When we get to a certain point a in, our, in our Christian evolution, you know, <laughs> then <laughs> things will happen. Term. We reach this critical mass and the gospel will go to the mm -hmm. whole world. Mm -hmm. It's like, why wait? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. wait? It's a dangerous thing to wait. The Holy Spirit awaits our demand. 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 And yes. Reception. Reception. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's available to us by faith, by claiming it. Mm -hmm. Now, you have something to read. Yeah, I, um, as we were studying this topic this afternoon, um, uh, this quote um, actually didn't come to mind. I found it from something that I had compiled mm -hmm. a few years ago. But um, this was a sermon that Ellen White preached in 1901. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it illustrates his point really well of how we can have assurance and be motivated to do more than what we have done. Mm. And she says, each one of you may know for yourself that you have a living Savior, that He is your helper and your God. You need not stand where you say, I do not know whether I am saved. Mm. Do you believe in Christ as your personal Savior? If you do, then rejoice. Yes. We do not rejoice half as much as we should. Mm. I see in Jesus a wonderful power and strength, and I want you to see this. Then your hearts will be as humble as the heart of a little child. Then you will not quarrel over who shall have the highest place or the highest wages. Your question will be, how can I best serve my yes. Lord? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So, that's yeah. the heart of it, man. Mm -hmm. That's so uh -huh. exciting. That treasure mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. so valuable. Mm -hmm. It's <clears throat> the world. And, and the, more. Yeah. And the enemy of our well, souls. It's the real world. Yeah. And the enemy of our souls does not want us to grasp that. Right. He works overtime to try to get that clouded and obscured. And, well, that's too simple. It's mm -hmm. surely, it, it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. make it co more complicated than it is, mm -hmm. really. It's actually very simple. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I think his number one aim is to discourage us. Absolutely. If we yeah. discourage it, get discouraged, we give up, we think God doesn't love us, mm -hmm. he thinks he's given up mm -hmm. on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When that's the farthest thing from the truth. If you read through the Old Testament <coughs> prophets, you know, the la even Lamentations, 
when Israel's been going downhill for hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. and they're ready to get tossed out into the, mm -hmm. into the trash pile by God. And mm -hmm. he's saying, you've done this and this and this and this and I'm going to throw you away. But even still, if you just return, I mm -hmm. will heal you. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. These people, after all they've done, God is just, you know, yeah. so God doesn't give up on mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says that over yeah. and over. There's hope for the worst case. Yeah. King Manasseh is a good example of that. He, yes. he burned his children alive oh. and then later repented. And God and restored him. God restored him. Incredible. This yeah. is the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if my family's not together, if my life is not together, mm -hmm. God knows that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, mm -hmm. come on, yeah. come back to me. Yeah. And yeah. in fact, one place where they, he says, you guys have, are going away and, and I'm going to throw you away. But no, wait a minute. They messed up when they asked for Saul to be the king. They asked for a king. And God says, you've done wickedly and you've rejected me. Nevertheless, don't go to these other nations because that's vain. Mm -hmm. Come to me mm -hmm. and I'll restore you. It's like, my goodness, this mm -hmm. is the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we feel discouraged, like God doesn't want to hear us, when we feel like we wouldn't be good missionaries, mm -hmm. it's like that's the kind of person God wants mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want people that feel like God could, they okay, I'm God pretty good, you know, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to take over God's kingdom, and in a couple of years, you know, he'll be able to come again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. So here's the next one, the next quote here. All true obedience comes from the heart. It was heart work with Christ. Now this isn't feeling work, mm -hmm. okay? This is something we have to understand, mm -hmm. okay? It, all true obedience doesn't come from, okay, I'm going to obey because Feeling I feel good. like obe mm -hmm. obeying. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a mind, it's like I see God is so lovely that I want that, mm -hmm. I want to do that. So then you I go through, it. yeah, I choose it. And then feelings can follow. Well, love isn't a feeling. You there know, a lot are feelings of people, involved. Right, but it's not a feeling. <laughs> exactly. It's not a feeling. Exactly, it's a decision. Mm -hmm. It's all tied together, mm -hmm. but the, the, the mind leads. And if we consent, okay, this is the cool part. If we can say, say, Lord, I give you permission. Because we have to understand that we are to pursue God with all of our heart, mind, mm -hmm. soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. But he pursues us first. Mm -hmm. Stronger than we pursue. Mm -hmm. If we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims. So blend our hearts and minds into conformity mm -hmm. to his will. That when obeying him, we shall be but carrying out our own impulses. Mm -hmm. I, that is so cool. Okay? And I believe that us, we as a church, are falling away from that. Because mm -hmm. if we weren't falling away from that, you'd see thousands of missionaries out there mm -hmm. where now there is a few. Mm -hmm. Really none. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to so, mention that we, we got a springboard into this topic or encouraged to think about these things uh -huh. from a sermon that Steve found and shared mm -hmm. with us. If you'd like to go looking for it on YouTube, it's called One Move, and it's Elder Ty Gibson from the 2012 Annual Council. And it's really, really a profound mm. look at this topic. I would say it's one of those sermons that I would like to listen to again and again. Mm -hmm. It's just powerful. And he really articulates like nobody I've ever heard mm -hmm. uh, the, the foundation, yes. what is necessary for all of this to work. Yes. Mm. One of the, yeah. So, and one of the beautiful things about that is, is, is centering, bringing all these things back into Christ mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. Centered in a person. Here's another quote from Christ's Object Lessons, page 48. True holiness is wholeness in the service of God. So, so why do we do mission heart, work? Whole, why do we serve? Yeah. So this is the condition of true Christian living. Christ asks for an unreserved consecration for undivided service, mm. he demands the heart, the mind, the soul, the strength. Self is not to be cherished. He who lives to himself is not a Christian. Wow. Now, it sounds like he's being selfish there. But mm -hmm. I believe that this is the only way that we can experience true joy mm -hmm. and true happiness. Mm -hmm. Is when we live outside of ourselves, not for ourselves, but for others and for Christ and for his glory. That brings us the greatest happiness, that brings our family the greatest happiness, and everybody that we meet, that opens the door to the greatest happiness for them. Mm -hmm. And this just reiterates, you know, a part of Scripture where Jesus said, you know, that our duty is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mm -hmm. all our mind, and all our soul. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember a number of years just, you know, really thinking about that and questioning, do you love God with all mm. your heart mm. and all your mind mm -hmm. and all your soul? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. But I knew I wasn't, right. but I wanted to. Yes. And the good news in all of this, we're, we're expressing some of the things that we need to be doing, perhaps that we're not. Mm -hmm. There's hope for all of us. Yes. There's hope for all of us. Yes. Mm. As we retell those stories of Israel's uh, wandering off and leaving God, mm -hmm. his unrelenting love. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, he's continually wooing, continually drawing. Yes. So there's hope for any of us. Yes. Any of us. And that's exciting, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic God we serve. Amen. So the next quote, if we love Jesus, and I think this is just following on the next page. Yeah, this is the continuation. It's talking about the rocky ground in the sower, the mm. parable of the sower. So okay. that's a section out of that chapter. If we love Jesus, we shall love to live for him, to present our thank offerings to him, to labor for him. The very labor will be light. Mm. For his sake, we shall covet pain and toil and sacrifice. Covet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Are you there? No, um, we're not there. Oh, I just wanted to make sure because I was feeling really bad because I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> about coveting my, it. In my flesh, no, I, I don't. But you know, the truth is that the greatest joy that I've experienced in life is come out of this mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I came up with uh, the saying, uh, suffering is the gateway to joy. Mm -hmm. Suffering in Christ mm -hmm. uh, is the gateway to joy mm -hmm. because only through suffering can somehow our hard hearts be broken up and, mm -hmm. our, and our, our really rock hard, you know, building your house on the rock. Mm -hmm. It takes hard work and, mm -hmm. and has some hammering and some mm -hmm. crowbarring and mm -hmm. things like that in my head mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes. Oh, it's loud in there. Yeah. <laughs> but even still, the very labor will be light. You know, I think, you know, I put, when I'm putting in long hours into God's work and stuff, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, I'm not even getting anything. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've already been paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look More than enough. Yes. So all my service, I could work the rest of my life for free. Mm -hmm. Never even start to scratch the surface mm -hmm. of what, what mm -hmm. he's given me. Mm -hmm. For his sake, we shall covet pain and toil and sacrifice. We shall sympathize with his longing for the salvation of men. Mm -hmm. We shall feel the same tender craving for souls that he has felt. Mm -hmm. That's when Christ starts to form within mm -hmm. us. You know, the wonderful thing, I mean, once again, one of the wonderful things about all of this mm -hmm. is it's him in us mm -hmm. doing all of this. Yes. Re realigning our desires, realigning our thoughts, mm -hmm. realigning our actions. Mm -hmm. It's Him and Him alone, only as we let Him in. Yes. You know, and, mm -hmm. and we develop a taste. We have a taste for the world. But when we get a taste of Christ, mm -hmm. that's really good food. It tastes mm -hmm. really good. But mm -hmm. a lot of times we have to retrain our tastes. You know, they say, you say you eat what you like. It's mm -hmm. not really true. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is that you always, you like what you eat. Mm -hmm. So like if you like so if you eat something that you don't like if you mm -hmm. eat it long enough mm -hmm. you'll end up liking it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's the way we have to retrain our tastes mm -hmm. to the spiritual things. We can make a choice to do that too. Mm, um, absolutely. I know I've experienced um, the Holy Spirit's retraining in my taste of music and mm -hmm. and different types of entertainment that I used to watch. Yeah. I can't watch them anymore. It just mm -hmm. right. it's like Nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's offensive now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, there, there was a time for me when I couldn't listen to classical music. I mean, it was a absolute mental exercise to listen to classical. But I knew that the music I was listening to, I didn't like what it was doing to me. So I wanted to listen to that stuff, the mm -hmm. classical. But it was like fingers on a, fingernails on a chalkboard. And I just had to keep, because it's a training of taste. People that grow up with a lot of spice, they eat food without spice, it's terrible to them. Mm -hmm. People that grow up with no spice in their food, they t touch any kind of spice and they just can't handle it. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you learn. And you can retrain your taste bud, retrain it for Christ. This is the religion of Christ. This heart religion, the love for Christ, this is the religion of Christ. And anything short of that is a deception. Mm -hmm. So anything short of what? Let's go back. That is... Uh, wholehearted, unreserved consecration, undivided service. 
That's true Christian living, and that's, and anything short of that is a deception. Hmm. So half-hearted Christianity, where we, a little bit in the church, a little bit in the world, doing our own thing, doing a little bit of Christ, that's a deception. You know, I was just thinking earlier, you know, the Bible talks about the narrow road mm -hmm. and the wide road. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly, before all of us is a choice of mm -hmm. two roads. Mm -hmm. We can take one or the other. Mm -hmm. But you can't be on one part-time and on the other part-time. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. They don't at any point intersect mm -hmm. or join. Mm -hmm. And I think too many of us try to juggle, you know, a life of of worldliness with, with pseudo-Christianity. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, Jesus wants, just like we want our wives to be 100% loyal and faithful to us. Be nice. Jesus <laughs> wants that from us. Of course, uh -huh. of course. You know, yeah. he doesn't want uh, a half-hearted spouse. Right, yeah, because that's where the joy is. Yeah. For him and for us. Yeah. And it's so hard to imagine, you know, he offers us such, such a different world, yeah. you know, the true riches right. versus the riches of this earth that... Just last a little yeah. few minutes. Oh, yeah. No mere theory of truth or professional discipleship <laughs> will save any soul. It's okay. We do not belong to Christ mm -hmm. unless we are His holy. It is by half-heartedness in the Christian life that men become feeble in purpose and changeable mm. in desire. Mm. The effort to serve both self and Christ makes one a stony ground hearer, and he will not endure when the test comes upon him. So this is the, this is the foundation. Foundation is wholehearted service, mm. wholehearted oh consecration to Christ and entering into that love relationship mm. where you're seeking him and he's seeking you, and out of that union, it's the, it's the, vi the branch and the vine. Mm -hmm. There's a vital, mm -hmm. it means a life-dependent connection mm -hmm. where you're right. getting his, your life from him. Your life is coming from him spiritually as well. Okay, now here's another sh scene from, this is, I love this scene because it's, this is a really sad situation, okay? He and his team have been working in this one site for five years and now, because of lack of funds, they're closing it down, okay? So he's struggling with, mm. what's the word? Discouragement, okay? And this is, what, this is what brings him forward. This is what keeps him going. I'm gonna play this now. Are committing their lives. I see old people who are being awakened uh, to the fact that Jesus died for us. Jesus died for me, not just for us. And because of that, that means that I have the privilege of sharing that news with others. And guess what? Jesus is coming again. And with that good news of Jesus coming again, who will go and share it with the community? This community. Who will live it? Who will walk with the drug abusing mother? Who will walk with the couple who's going through a marital problems, who will walk with these people. See, this is, this is, what, this is what we're talking about, is that here's a, here's a person that's experienced by faith, the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Christ has done this for me, how can I not do this mm -hmm. for somebody else? Mm -hmm. How can I mm -hmm. stop? And, and then he starts to, to sympathize with, with the people that he's met. And that's the heart of Christ. Mm -hmm. These are Christ's people that, he, that Christ has died for them as well. And Christ loves them, and so if Christ is in me, if he's coming through me, then I will sympathize with the, thing, the people that Christ is sympathizing with. And to me, this is so beautiful, and this is the heart of missions. And this is the foundation of missions, because his motivation that day was Jesus Christ's sacrifice 2,000 years ago, uh -huh. and his presence today. Uh -huh. That's what, I, I just love that. Yeah, that, that longing for people to know him. Mm hmm Yes, and that willingness to suffer, mm. you know, to suffer discouragement, to suffer uh, lack, um, to work against all odds when no one else is interested, which blows me away. Mm. I mean, here he is, he's taking our earthly goods and he's transforming them into heavenly goods. Mm -hmm. It's like 
the greatest investment you could mm -hmm. ever make. Mm -hmm. And hardly anybody cares. Hardly anybody's really interested in what he's doing, mm -hmm. which just blows me away. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yes, it is heartbreaking. The will, refined and sanctified, will find its highest delight in doing his service, which is reaching other people, mm -hmm. helping other people, serving other people, walking with the drug you know, induced mother or whatever you call that. When we know God as it is our privilege to know Him, our life will be a life of continual obedience. Mm. Through an appreciation of the character of Christ, through communion with God, sin will become hateful to us. So instead of keeping trying to overcome sin, instead of focusing on getting over sin, we can focus on getting into Christ, mm -hmm. on seeing Christ, mm -hmm. seeing God and His character. Mm -hmm. And as that mm -hmm. fills us, I will like push out all this other stuff that's in our lives. The last message of mercy to, the given, to be given to the world is a revelation of the character of love, God's character of love. So this is the heart of it. Hmm. This, is, this is what it's all about. Jesus is the living center of everything. Put Christ into every sermon. Let the preciousness, mercy, and glory of Jesus Christ be dwelt upon until Christ is formed within the hope of glory. The center of every sermon. Never should a sermon be preached or Bible instruction in any line, in any line be given without pointing the hearers to the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Love must be the principle of action. Love is the underlying principle of God's government in heaven and earth, and it must be the foundation of the Christian's character. This alone can make and keep him steadfast. What alone? The love of the foundation of my character alone will make, keep me, make and keep me steadfast. Mm. This alone can enable me <coughs> to withstand trial and temptation. It's that love. Mm. It's that love of Christ. And love will be revealed in sacrifice. The plan of redemption was laid in sacrifice. A sacrifice so mm. broad and deep and high that it is immeasurable. Christ gave all for us. And those who receive Christ will be ready to sacrifice all for the sake of their Redeemer, happily. The thought of His honor and glory will come before anything else. Mm. So why do so many of us seek honor and glory in this earth? I think it's because our eyes are blinded to the beauty and the glory yeah. of Christ. Yeah. We I just think we don't, just don't think him. about it. Yeah, we, we don't. don't. We don't look at him, and you know, that's one quote that keeps coming to my mind, and it's from Desire of Ages, I believe. Let me look at here real quick. Yeah, it says, it would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing ones. Mm -hmm. As we thus dwell upon his great sacrifice for us, our confidence in him will be more constant. Mm. Our love will be quickened, and we shall be more deeply imbued with His Spirit. Mm. If we would be saved at last, we must learn the lesson of penitence and humiliation at the foot of the cross. Desire of Ages, page 83. So this is the, this is the principle of look and live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a serpent was raised up in the, <clears throat> in the, wilderness. In the wilderness, all they had to do was look. Mm -hmm. And that's my experience, you know. I always wanted to be a good Christian guy. But it wasn't until I was 33 years, years old till I, God got me into a spot where I stopped long enough, stopped seeking after Him, just stopped and looked mm -hmm. at Christ. Mm -hmm. And I realized He'd, been, fall, he'd be, been like in this alternate universe with me all along, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that He was there. Mm -hmm. I, I think we don't um, grasp eternal realities the mm -hmm. way we mm -hmm. should. The, mm -hmm. the, the reality of the great controversy is Mm -hmm. kind of vague and, you know, theoretical. Mm -hmm. And we don't sometimes realize that we're, you know, our, our choices are having an impact that will last for eternity, for, yeah. for good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Ellen White says that we have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, um, some friends of, of my wife and I um, had lost a little baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was such a difficult experience um, to see them go through that, but also to feel sympathy for them because, you know, we could imagine ourselves in, mm -hmm. in their place. 
um, do we realize that God is going to lose his children mm -hmm. if we don't do our part mm -hmm. to reach them? Mm -hmm. And he has so, so much greater love mm -hmm. for, for us and for the world than any earthly parent can have for their child. Mm -hmm. Wow. I read a, a statement last, this week uh, from a worldly source that says that we tend to think of ourselves, our future selves, as a stranger. We don't identify with our future selves. In other words, I, don't, I never saw myself as being 50 years old. Mm. I never, and it's like that, mm -hmm. song, that guy sometime in the future, I never thought I'd be there, but here I am. So who, you know, me 100 million years from now. Mm. It'll still be me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And this is Paul talking. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I think Paul was a happy guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> filled with the fullness and the knowledge of God's love. I don't think he was very happy before. No. He was seeking to kill Christians and lock them up. And mm -hmm. I think he was a pretty miserable guy. That wouldn't be a fun fun way to live. No, filled with self. Mm -mm. But when he died to self, and he lived fully consecrated to God, then that life started to fill him. Mm -hmm. And Christ says, I have come that they might have life, and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that's worthy of our enthusiasm mm -hmm. to seek after. Mm -hmm. But not just for ourselves, but it's in the giving up of ourself, mm -hmm. of selfishness, mm -hmm. that we find it. Mm -hmm. So we give, uh, give it yeah. for others. Um, I don't see, as I read through his letters, I don't see him on a, a spiritual roller coaster where he had mountaintop experiences and then plunged Deep into valleys. despair. Uh -huh. yeah. it, was, it was more even, you know, with, with assurance of salvation that yeah. whatever happened to him, um, all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the strong infilling of, of the fullness of God he talks about, that, mm -hmm. you, that you can know the fullness of God, the love and the height and depth, and oh, it's just amazing stuff. Yeah. Colossians 1.26, the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, I'm not going to put it right now, but I want to emphasize this, this riches, okay? The riches, I think we do not value what we're going to learn here in a second. We don't value it like we value, like, a paycheck, mm -hmm. or you know, a car, mm -hmm. or just food to survive. I mm -hmm. mean, that's value. Your house, your car, going to work in the morning, getting there on time so you can keep your job. That's really important. But this is the true riches, which is Christ in you, the oh, hope of glory. glory. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we put as much time into seeking that mm -hmm. as we do into our jobs and getting an education and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. To remove the cross from the Christian would be like blotting out the sun from the sky. The cross brings us near to God, reconciling us to Him. Without the cross, man could have no union with the Father. On it depends our every hope. Wow. So it's not just Christ, but Christ and Him crucified. That's pretty dramatic to, you know, imagine if there were no sun in the sky. Yeah, so, it'd be pretty dark. Pretty dark, and I think there is a lot of dark Christians, according mm. to this. Yeah. You know, to remove the cross is like to remove the sun. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that really speaks to me. Yeah, you think mm. about what happens to the plants outside when there's no, mm. when there's no sun, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, what do they do? They wither, they die. There's, what would no, there's yeah. nothing left. What would happen yeah. to animals and humanity? We'd have no food. And he's supposed to be that vital to our, mm -hmm. to our life, our, ver our very life, mm -hmm. that it'd be like, you know, for example, going without breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and a little bit of time that we got to study together this, this week, it just that whole idea that Christ is first and mm -hmm. foremost and mm -hmm. the reason for everything just kept coming mm -hmm. back to each of us. And um, I found it so powerful mm -hmm. that Christ died f 
for, and this, this came to mind in Sabbath school the other day, and it was that Christ died not for, um, the, not for the doctrines or the traditions. You know, that was one thing that was the topic of the Sabbath school quarterly this week. Not for those things. He didn't even die for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. died for me, mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. and for all of us. Mm -hmm. And that's the amazing thing. He died for the people. Mm -hmm. And when we study the life of Christ, like Mrs. White recommends over and over, and like the scriptures say, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to know anything but Christ crucified, you know. Mm -hmm. the, it's just when we study his life like she tells us to and the word tells us to, we learn so much about mm. that love, that longing, that heart that he mm. has for his children. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it's beautiful. Amen. It's just beautiful. Mm. Amen, yeah. So that's what, I mean, like, to be honest with you, that, 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 that's the motivation, mm -hmm. is Christ. And, and, mm. and getting, getting more of Christ is what, is what, I, you, know, is what you really want. It's, it's, there's nothing else quite like it. And once you get a taste of it, it's like you want, you want more. Mm -hmm. So how do you get mm -hmm. more? How do you get more of Christ? Well, that's in service to others. Mm -hmm. To get more of Christ is in service to, to others because that's where Christ is. You know, Christ is a, is a carpenter. He mm -hmm. gets his hands dirty. And he moves into places where there's the greatest need. Mm -hmm. That's where he hangs out. And that's where he works. Mm -hmm. And so if we want more of Christ, we'll go where he is. So his, his work as a carpenter was not his primary focus of coming to this earth then? <laughs> no. But yet we seem to make the primary focus of our existence here our jobs, mm. our secular yes. jobs. Mm -hmm. Is that a Christian a a attitude? No. Do you have a Bible text for that? All I know is to be a Christ follower mm. is to do what he did, to do his works. Yes. Our time is up. We're going to have to talk about that <laughs> next week because you guys are okay. leading into next week's topic <laughs> with what you're talking about right now. So our topic for next week is all seek their own. And there's a couple of Bible verses that use that phrase. So you might want to look them up. But, you know, I hope that tonight's topic has caused you to think like it has caused us to think about really Christ being the center of everything. We can study all sorts of things. We can learn all sorts of knowledge and whatever. But if we don't know Christ, what do we really know? If we're doing all sorts of things, but we're not doing them in, with, and through Christ, mm -hmm. then what are we doing them for? And what are we really accomplishing? So I want to challenge you to go and study Christ, study his life, study his death, study him before he came here. There's a little bit said about his time in heaven, and there's more said about his ministry in the heavenly sanctuary now. Study Christ. Mm -hmm. Study the foundation, and you will learn to love him and your fellow men because of it. May God bless you until we see you next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Mission TV Live. <laughs>